Hi, I'm Gary Diamore. I am a colonel and device driver guy um, for Lumos, founder for Lumos. Um, been doing solar stuff forever. What I want to do is make sure that we, there's a whole lot I could talk about. So I could compress, I mean, I'm trying to compress what's really a week long course into an hour. Um, <laughs> so what I want to do is tune this to you guys. So if you guys have questions, you want to stop and talk about something, I want you guys to get the most value out of it because there's probably a lot of this stuff that um, I'm, going to, I'm going to be blazing through it otherwise. So, um, so a little bit about Illumos. Everybody here know, kind of have some familiarity with what Illumos is or should I? Okay, derived from Open Solaris, POSIX. Um, there's Distros, Open Indiana. Uh, the Xenta Store, StormOS. There's another one starting called Illumion. The key thing is Illumos is the core of the OS core, and so we're going to talk mostly about that. Um, and that'll be where our, where our talk is, is focused. Um, <clears throat> a little bit about where you can find more information. Of course, the web pages, but man, uh, for, for developer stuff, man pages are great. Uh, just be aware that if you're coming from a Linux background, man pages are in a different place. Um, Google is your friend, right? Um, there's a ton of printed matter. Unfortunately, one of my favorite websites is gone. And that was docs.sun.com. I think there you can get, there's an Oracle TechNet, and you can get access to some of this stuff if you haven't got an Oracle license. Um, I'm not sure how to find it. I don't have an Oracle service plan, whatever they're doing. Um, if you're a documenter and you want to help um, address this for Lumos, please come see me. We can talk. Okay, so I'm going to skip past user space development. Anybody, anybody want me to talk a little bit about that? Yeah? Okay. Very briefly, the answer for user space is it's POSIX. Um, Linux uh, isn't POSIX. Uh, and that's the problem we have right now is, is that there's a monoculture developing where, where folks develop for Linux APIs. They don't think about POSIX. Um, and it's not specifically just POSIX, but um, with an eye towards developing portable applications. If your application runs on Linux and BSD, it'll probably run on, um, on Lumos. So that's the main thing. But just be aware that Linux is <coughs> Linux developers have unintentionally, and I don't I don't assign malign intent here, but they've sort of become this sort of embrace and extend that people accuse Microsoft of, right? They add new APIs, developers use them, and pretty soon those applications don't work on anywhere else. So um, just keep an eye towards portability. Um, this stuff, guess what? Your GUIs and stuff, that's all just like you're used to on Linux. So I'm not going to talk about that. Um, the one key thing is, because these are delivered via distribution, uh, you're, you, need, you need to look at the docs that are associated with the distribution. Uh, they're not part of the Illumos core. So, uh, if you go to the Lumos developer list, you can ask questions, but a lot of people can go, oh. <laughs> you know, go, go talk to the normal KDE folks or whatever. But, uh, but yeah. so that's just like Linux or FreeBSD or whatever. Um, I had these slides in here about services. This was, again, I was thinking about the user space stuff. Uh, one of the key things that's different if you're developing a daemon or uh, even you're administering Linux is that uh, we have this thing called SMF. Um, and we have services are described via manifest that's in XML. And the configuration for this is stored in a SQLite database. So I don't know if you can just, actually that came up pretty good. It's hard to read on my screen, but I think it's pretty readable here. So you can see this is a sample manifest. Uh, this is for the interrupt resource daemon, uh, the, um, or interrupt, it's the inter -D, I guess it's just the interrupt daemon. Its job, this little daemon's job is to change what um, CPUs certain interrupts are bound to, um, to try to um, get an idea of dynamic load balancing of interrupts on a system. And this, this XML just describes it. So if you were developing a service, you can see, you, you develop one of these things and then there's um, uh, tools by which you can load them into. So if you um, look at the man pages for services, SVCS, you can, that'll be a starting point for how to find, find documentation. A lot of what I'm gonna talk about here is gonna be just starting points because, I, as I said, I've got a week of material to compress in this much time. I really want to focus more on that kernel stuff. One of the things is Solaris, I'm sorry, did you have a question? Okay. One of the things as Solaris developers we need to think about is interface stability. And the reason we need to think about interface stability is when you go and act, you access an interface, um, you'd like the uh, notion of your application or your driver or your piece of code will work from one release to the next. Um, so Solaris historically had a very nice, um, very nice way of handling this with um, 
there was, we had interface classifications, what we call stability. So a stable interface was one that you could count on, we call it with a capital S, was one you could count on pretty much not changing. And then there was degrees less than that. Um, actually, there was also standard, which was kind of one higher, except that standard went, that it was subject to change by a standards committee, not by the company. So, um, you, there's a PSARC, so PSARC, if you Google for PSARC, um, there, you can find those archives online. I didn't put the web, the uh, URL on there because I couldn't remember the URL last night when I was putting this up. Um, but you can Google for, for PSAR cases on interfaces you're interested in. Man pages, there's a man page for, if you're looking at a function at an entry point or documentation, in the man page you'll see a, stabi a stability um, attribute in the man page and it'll tell you whether this is. If you can't find a man page on the interface, <laughs> Um, that may mean that that's not a documented interface. Well, obviously there's no man page. So it, that could be an interface subject to change. Um, now, in Lumos, we're still kind of figuring out what this means, but anyway. Um, one of the nice things is if you're bundled code, that means your code is part of the Lumos gate, i.e. it's like it's your, your the Linux equivalent would be your code is part of the kernel distribution. You have a much broader set of interfaces you can safely use because when those interfaces change, the, it will be incumbent on the person making the change to change the consumers that are in that, in that code source tree. Um, just a, a brief summary of some interfaces that are kind of, uh, you won't see in Linux normally, you know, streams, you have a sys event. Um, doors, there's a port of doors to Linux. Doors is really cool. It's a local kind of RPC, very fast. Um, we use it for a lot of different things. Um, in fact, the sys event framework uses doors. Um, and libdevinfo, which is a way to access our device tree. And gonna, I've got a lot more to talk about the device tree um, because that's really um, interesting to kernel guys. Um, where do you find the source tree? Well, we've got it in Mercurial. Um, and you'll see that there's, uh, there's the URL uh, for Mercurial. Um, I didn't talk about the fact that we use Mercurial, but uh, there's also uh, Git, uh, Git mirrors, and I don't have the information on it here, but. Uh, again, Google is your friend. You can ask me offline, and I'll try to find it. I just access the Mercurial stuff directly. And there's a, so there's stuff on Bitbucket and GitHub. And then the, one of the nicest ways, if you're not actually, if you're just per perusing source, the night we have one of the nicest source code browsers around. It's called OpenGrok, um, and that was also developed at Sun. And here's what it looks like. I'm, I, I could actually pull up a demo, and we could run a bunch of demos here. But the nice thing is, you can, there's a blame, there's, you can do all kinds of cross-indexing and searching. It's really, really a very nice way to deal, um, to deal with source from the web. Um, in some ways, I actually use this all the time. Some people use Cscope, but with Cscope, you've got to build a Cscope database, and you have a local repository. I can access this from my iPhone if I have a question, right? Uh, it's harder to do that for Cscope. Open Grok? Um, well, I think both I think both Mercurial and, and Git, but I don't I don't not entirely certain about Git. I think it supports Git. It's a lot different than Git Web, or is it? Because Git Web does something similar. It, it, they're all just different different ones. I haven't used Git, Git Web that much, so um, I live in Lumos, and so I use Open Grok. Um, we actually have up on the Open Grok site on the source style Lumos one. There's also a copy of the FreeBSD tree, which is another interesting one to look at sometimes. Um, and we just some actually one of the, one of the um, sysads decided that was useful and put it up, so it was pretty cool. Um, a little bit about if you're looking at the source tree, our source tree organization, it's a little different. Um, so you'll see at the top level we have a user source directory, um, um, and you can guess most of what's in there. The surprising one is that the kernel is in a directory called UTS. So uh, UTS is, it comes back from Unix timeshare. Underneath that, you'll find uh, directories like Common and then Intel i86PC. There's also some Sun4U, which is Sun4V, and Spark directories, which are if you're interested in Spark hardware. But most people in here are probably more interested in the x86 stuff. Um, and, um, you'll notice that there's a separation between Intel and i86PC. There's also, um, what's the Zen directory? X, I, uh, uh, x86. XPV or something like this. I don't remember the exact name. But there's, so the difference was that you could have some differences between different implementations of the x86 architecture. 
And so the I86PC one is really just generic BIOS ACPI based PCs, right? Um, the Zen stuff lives in a different subdirectory. Um, and Intel would be everything that's generic to all x86 architectures. Um, and most of the time, you don't have to dive into I86 PC unless you're doing something strange yourself. Um, okay. A little bit about our a little bit about our kernel. So of course we're um, system five release four point two derived, um, and uh, this means we pick up some things out of that, like streams and our and our DDI. In fact, the, the notion of a stable DDI DDK, I think, oh, goes back to system five release four point two, or maybe even earlier, but system five stuff. Um, the key thing is that Sun has maintained this idea of a, of a stable DDI, which is really strange if you come from another world, because I can take a driver, I have, a, I have an Ethernet driver that I wrote and I, for Solar 7. I could take that driver, run it on Solar 8, 9, 10, Illumos, open Solaris, no problem. Same binary, I don't even have to recompile. Um, so we have a stable ABI. Now, of course, that driver is not taking advantage of all the newer interfaces that have been added since. And occasionally we do remove interfaces, but we do so in an, order, in order, in an orderly fashion. Now, there's a downside here, which is that there's a whole bunch of useful things that are not part of the official DDI or have never been documented. There's things that, um, interfaces that have been planned to go there, but then Oracle closed the tab, and the process to complete the documenting these things and making them part of our normal documented uh, DDI, or DDI stands for Device Driver Interface, and then there was the DDK, which is the Device Driver Kit. Um, those things have, that process wasn't completed, and we would love to have some help with that. So if you find yourself using these interfaces and they're undocumented, if you're gonna spend the time figuring them out, I would really love, and you're so inclined, but really love help documenting them and, and bringing them into sort of the stable stuff. And we have, you know, talk to me or talk to the mailing list, talk on, ask on the mailing list, and uh, I think you'll find other people are of a similar mind there. Um, um, and of course, uh, the Solaris kernel, the Lumos kernel is threaded throughout, you know, SMP pretty much from, to get get go. Um, I suppose 2.0 two and 2.1 were kind of not, but yeah, we won't go there. Um, where do you find stuff about the kernel um, documentation? Section 9 is our kernel section, and there's subsections underneath that. So you see section 9F is for functions, 9E is for entry points. And section device drivers live in section 7, so sometimes if you need, um, including the IOCTL interfaces, which are things that a driver exposes out to user space. Those would be like in section 7i um, or some other subsection of, of section 7. Um, the <coughs> kind of the canonical documentation for the DDI is a book called Writing Device Drivers. Um, it's become rather dated because there's newer, newer public interfaces, but it's still a really good starting point. There's another document that I haven't put on here, which I should have, uh, and I apologize. I was hastily putting this, uh, these slides together, and a lot of things fell through the cracks. But one is called um, the Streams Programming Guide. So if you're writing a device driver that is streams-based, you'll want to look at that. Um, and I'm not going to talk a whole lot about streams. I could spend easily over an hour. I could spend probably the better part of a day talking about the streams interfaces. So. Um, but if that, you, one of the things is that oh, there are a lot of drivers that are streams based. Yeah. I've already mentioned PSARC, PSARC case logs, so a lot of times there's useful information in those. So um, again, Google will help you find this. So you just Google for PSARC and then the topic that you're interested in, and you have a good chance of finding content. Um, if you can't find it, um, the Lumos developers list is a good chance, a good place to go. Um, and of course, there's the source code, um, which. Um, 